the the kind of main talking point from yesterday was um the controversial Zeke Lau. Yeah, what did you think about call? that? I thought Zeke got robbed actually. I mean the, you, the fact did that you watch it on I didn't watch did you it understand. I didn't watch it live, uh, but you can explain to the listener what happened if you watched it live. Yeah, so Zeke, it was an elimination round heat. Zeke Lau, this is a pet event for him. He uh kind of needs this result. I think that he can plan his year round doing well in the sunset event. So there's kind of additional pressure there for him. And he found himself in the elimination round, uh, round two, as it is. And he was winning the entire heat based on his surfing. Leonardo Fioravante was in second place and Rio Waida was in third place. There was two minutes left. Zeke had priority. So he's in control in every measure. Uh, The third place, uh, Rio Waida, he was... He was basically, Rio needed a small score, 4.5 or something like that. So Zeke was kind of sharking Rio to make sure that if Rio paddled for a wave, Zeke would, of course, take that wave with priority. Well, there was a marginal wave that Rio paddled for. So Zeke kind of paddled in on the shoulder just to see if Rio was going to get it and then withdrew from the wave. Neither of them went. Well, the priority judges... Again, there's a minute and 50 seconds left. One minute later, the priority judges reviewed that footage and determined that Zeke made a concerted effort for that wave. So they flipped priority. So now there's 50 seconds left in the heat. Priority is now flipped. Zeke has last priority, but is unawares. So he reportedly, we find out after the fact, when he made that for that paddle for that wave with Rio, he checked in with priority just to say like, okay, I made a little bit of a paddle for that wave. Did the priority judge deem that I made a concerted effort or did they not? And he checked in, he still had priority. Did he look at his Apple watch? I don't know that. If the Apple watch failed here. That'd be interesting. If that was the the culprit again. The whole point of this whole thing, the Apple watch does two things. It has heat time and priority. That's the only things that has. Yeah. Does it have the scores? Uh, yeah, and the scores, but okay. yeah, I mean, score heat time scores and priority. Okay, reason. so if it fa- if that was a culprit, that'd be interesting. But the point is, is that Zeke did his due diligence after he paddled for that wave by checking, and he was still with priority. The judges had an extra delayed call and then switched the priority with less than one minute left. So with less than one minute left, you're really focused on where your competitor is and what waves are coming. And ultimately a wave came. Rio went, Zeke burned him thinking he had priority. Turns out he didn't and ended up uh, that call being against him. And he got last place in the heat, lost the heat. So he was pissed. He stormed up the beach. The camera kind of uh, jostled like and pulled away to not you know, to not film the drama, essentially. To make sure. That's a good job. World, World Surf League does best well, what, at what's not crazy. filming interesting stuff. And the commentators don't discuss it either. No. So we're watching this unfold. Kaipo is at a loss for words where he's like, oh, I guess um, Zeke didn't know that he had priority. Wow. Unfortunately, this is sport. And occasionally <laughs> there's controversial calls in sport. Anyways, moving on and goes on to the next heat. And it's like, well, I just saw Zeke running up the beach and I saw the camera kind of jostle, you know, as, as if they're like not sure that they should film it or not film it. And uh, Kaipo seems flustered. What is pe- What are people not talking about? Well, thankfully, Leonardo Fioravanti discussed it in his, so he won that heat based on that priority call he ends up in first and he ends up addressing it with alex mccord and basically explains everything that i just explained leo's becoming a hero for the people by the way he really is yeah he really is that's the other storyline here you know is like if everybody of all of the post heat interviews we see every day 20 he's the only one who says anything interesting i mean and And all it is is all it is is him telling the truth and it's him telling us what the wsl commentators should be telling us in every heat it's wild yeah but continue on with what leo told the audience so leo basically said exactly what i said he explained that there was a time delay and he said i figured out that priority had switched and when i saw zeke paddling for that wave that he actually burned rio on i even said to him zeke don't go like you don't have priority but Leo also explained it's a wild 
uh, we're, we're out to sea, there's wind, there's waves, we can't really hear everything. So even if the beach announcers called it out, we can't always hear it unless it's like docile at that moment. And in that moment, that last minute, you don't have time to be looking at your watch. I mean, if you are tracking your competitor, if you are paddling for waves, you don't have time to be looking at the watch. So he's like, honestly, the priority judges should not make a call that late. No. And secondly, they need to deliver the information effectively because our first primary job out here is surfing the two best waves in the heat and keeping our, you know, like we don't have time to be focused on those other things. So. I mean, it, it really is true that <clears throat> in order for Zeke, I think, you know, and I think Zeke has his detractors amongst surf fans. Like he's, you know, for whatever reason, I don't think he's a fan favorite generally. Yeah. Uh, nothing against Zeke at all, but, um, you know, I think part of it probably has to do with that kook ultimate surfer, which I mean, what a career busting move for him. But anyway, all to say, uh, he's very likely to fall off tour again, based on, like you said, at the start, this is one of his strong events, right? And he's already had a phenomenal winter, right? I mean, surfed great at the Eddy. Yeah. Uh, had a great backdoor shootout, like, has, and then to have it end in a whimper based on World Surf League incompetence yeah. would be pretty dang frustrating. Totally. And I'm one of his detractors. I would not normally sure. sympathize with Zeke. And I feel like maybe it's karmic. Like, yeah, he's kind of had it coming. Like he's, remember his paddle thing with John John? Yeah. You know, like he's a, he's a dick. And like, if he's going to implement strategy at some point, for the win, then it gonna get it's gonna get used against him at some point for a loss. So it is fine. It is what it is. However, there is someone to blame here, and it's the priority judges. So I think the priority judges got this wrong twice. Yeah. They got it wrong by waiting a minute. And they got it wrong, by the way, by deeming the priority switch for him paddling for that wave with Rio. Sure. Like if you really go back and watch that wave, neither of Neither of them were actually ever going to catch that wave. Neither yeah. of them made a concerted effort. Rio kind of stroked just to see, like, because sometimes it lurches up at the last second, you know? Sure. And at that point, you then make a put your head down and make the concerted effort. So he just kind of had a little stroke in to take a glimpse. And Zeke did his job on the shoulder of just taking a glimpse in to see what Rio was going to do. But there was no concerted effort. So I think it's a wrong call to even deem it a switch of priority at that point. But to do it a minute later, I mean, that's the problem. To me, the judgment call on did he did he try or did he not, right? Like, because that's a straight judgment call. So if you decided he tried, you better decide that second and switch it and let him know, right? Like, if that was your call, because the wrong call for, you know, like the Super Bowl just happened this last week and the controversial holding call at the end right it can go back and forth and obviously eagles fans will feel totally ripped off by it and chiefs fans will be happy about it but still it's a it's a you know a judgment call from the ref priority is a judgment call from the priority judge so whatever live with the results but to delay it and really and delay it to the point where zeke still thinks he has priority because obviously zeke wasn't just out there burning burning rio no Like wouldn't have done it had he thought that he had, or yeah, didn't have priority. I know these, um, all for all the rules that the WSL tries to apply onto the thing, it really only complicates, like it's so subjective every step of the way and their effort to try to objectify it makes it silly. It's a futile effort, you know? I mean, it just, again, I think, and I wouldn't be the only one thinking this, which is the World Surf League is perpetually making itself look completely incompetent. And at some point, looking incompetent becomes the same as being incompetent. And it's just, an, it's, I mean, it's an incompetent league run by incompetent people. At it the really, end. And again, running in good waves solves almost all of these little squabbles because if the waves are 12 feet, it would be pretty clear in almost every sure. heat who the best surfer is in the given heat. But when they're not, you have people uh, battling with fives, which that entire heat was, and then trying to implement other little strategies to win the heat like to this. win with the so, five. Yeah. yeah, they would never be he would never be hounding the other surfer in the lineup if there's a 12 foot set on the horizon throughout yeah. the entire heat. You know what I mean? You just focus on surfing. And I mean, that's it. 
Uh, but then, and then triple down on the incompetence. So exactly like you touched on, there's, if there's one interesting thing that'll happen in a, in a given day of bad surf, World Surf League guaranteed will pull the camera and, but it, the weird yeah. thing is, the especially weird thing is, is for sure box to box films and their make or break television program were there to capture it all, right? And so it's not like they're not afraid. They're not afraid of the controversy. The like World Surf League is incompetent at broadcasting too. Like that would have been the only really interesting thing that day. They should have kept the camera on Zeke, see what he did. Kaipo and whoever was in the booth with him should have discussed, okay, they should have went over the footage. You th- what do you think, right? Which is the problem. I was thinking this uh, back to the NFL thing, right? Um, Greg Olson, I think, was in the booth calling it uh, as the color man. And right away, that holding call that ended the game, he was like, this is a horrible call. This is a horrible call, right? And he kept on, like, he just couldn't stop being like amazed by what a bad call it was where it was just going on and on of this is you know and they would show it from all the angles and i'm Mm -hmm. just not seeing it here etc etc and i was thinking how do they do this and then i was remembered oh yeah because this is fox uh broadcasting the nfl it's not the nfl broadcasting itself which i would imagine the nfl even broadcasting itself would be smart enough to know that what there's judgment calls and there's whatever but it's getting people engaged in those things has value world surf league is so dumb that doesn't can't even discuss the interesting thing thing that happens in front of them i thought to myself i can't wait to hear from zeke and then i realized there's zero chance that they hand a microphone to zeke at this point you know what i mean yeah which is insane like why would you not address it with the person who experienced it and let them speak about it and at least if at least try and have him push the mic away angrily or whatever, right? Yeah. Then I mean you have tension and you have a storyline and you have something. Yeah. Well, I really hope that Leonardo recognizes this role that he's filled this year. Yeah. And embraces it. And no he kidding. Bring it because all that he is doing, like he's not saying anything controversial. Behind, no, or behind like um, you know. Uh, a non-disclosure he's not revealing any secret information he's just telling you what's happening in the water that's That's it it, which is what strider should be doing when he's in the water it's what the commentator should be doing while they're in the booth like the fact that the commentators have some sort of a fourth wall that we're not allowed to see past that they're operating even though they're supposed to be operating, uh, reflecting the viewers kind of experience is really what they should be doing and explaining to the viewer and providing insight from on the ground to the viewer, what we're watching. That's their role. The fact that they don't, and instead they have an invisible wall that they're operating behind is insane. And so for Leo to p- pull back that curtain and just be like, hey, in the water, my watch didn't work. Hey, in the water, Zeke didn't know. You know, it's like, wow, this is insight. This is I'm, really, really insightful. I mean, Leo is like a surfer reborn this year. Having fallen yeah. off, uh, He's he comes back with like, it feels with a real air of nothing to lose both yeah. in his like, Hey man, I'm just going to, I'm going to call it as I see it both on, in my interviews and uh, like he's surfing well, right. He's getting through heats. I mean, yeah. he, what did he, where did he end up pipe? He ended up pretty second. well. Yeah. Second. That's, that's it. Ended <laughs> very well. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I am a big fan of new Leo. It's funny how personality wise, he's filling the role of his fellow uh, European in Jeremy Flores. Jeremy Flores sure always played that role as well. I mean, Jeremy Flores was, yeah, I didn't realize how much he was missed until I Leo, know. but now that I remember how much he's missed, but I have Leo. I know. Yeah. It's, I wonder what that is. Uh, obviously it's France versus Italy. They're not the same country, but the fact that they're both European, I think maybe. Well, I mean, but Leo grew up ostensibly in France too, or a yeah, ton of true. it. I mean, Belly lives right yeah. there. Yeah. He's worldly in that way. Yep. 